It's okay to not be okay. It's a chronic thing I have to manage. Not holding those feelings in was um, one of the better things for me. Having a therapist isn't you're crazy, it's actually you're brilliant. It's something that I can't change about myself. In fact, it's okay, I've learned to embrace it. Body tension. Your heart beating. I can create scenarios that never even existed. Clench their jaws, grind their teeth. It feels like a weight. It feels like drowning. Anxiety Nation. I was a very happy, jovial center of attention, um, and I liked being around all types of people. I started to um, social, you know, distance to where I wasn't out. I wasn't as happy um, as I was. I wouldn't get up in the morning ready to conquer the world. And what I saw was, and my family saw, was a shift in personality. I didn't do really well around people, and social situations would get very overwhelmed and very panicky, and would try to find a way to escape. I have probably felt that way for, again, as long as I've had conscious thought. Anxiety gives us that arousal, that extra oomph to get things done. Once it starts interfering with our functioning, then it becomes a problem. Many people who have excessive anxiety, they can't function as they would want to. I fall into that pattern of trying to white knuckle it, so to speak, and get th through it, whatever it is, but that hasn't been effective. If anything, it just creates this vicious cycle of spiraling anxiety. To have a problem would be physically down uh, because of my, one of my medical conditions and then my PTSD would come up because I would get upset or I'd start asking all the intrusive thoughts come back with why did this happen? What am I going to do? Because I, I basically lost my military career after 24 years. A health task force is now recommending all adults under 65 be screened for anxiety. Anxiety is associated with a number of other problems such as substance use disorders or substance misuse. And obviously that's got a cascade of problems. So I think it will only better society and behoove us to be able to screen and treat more people. Only within the last few years have I really come to know that I have anxiety. I had no idea. Anxiety disorders fall under five major categories. It manifests itself in the physical form 100%. My heart will start beating out of my chest. Even just the feeling of being numb or frozen in time. Being diagnosed can stir up different emotions. When I got the diagnosis of uh, PTSD, intermittent explosive disorder, general anxiety, um, and major depression. I felt like a second rate human. And it took me several days and the support of my wife and my kids to say, okay, this is where we're at. And for any, for us to get any better, you have to figure out where you're at, take a deep breath and take your first step. It was comforting for me, honestly, because again, it, it did have a label. I also look at it as being um, a superpower for me. Um, it allows me to think very hypercritical. It allows me to see the big picture. There was some relief in knowing that, okay, I shouldn't be feeling this way, but I also experienced, I also experienced shame, just, and feelings of unworthiness or weakness. More than three million adults reporting severe symptoms are not in treatment. A lot of people will say, I'm strong, I can handle it. They're white knuckling it through what they're doing. 
It doesn't have to be that hard. Life is hard anyway. I've tried to cope with it behind closed doors. Inhale. One of the biggest steps I've taken in healing and effectively managing my anxiety is the acknowledgement and the acceptance that it's there and that it's a, a part of who I am. Every now and then I may not be on the top of my game and I just need that uh, reciprocity just to understand that there's something going on and just get me the help I need. And I want to grow, I want to foster, I want to regain my family. And um, whatever that takes. It is constant thinking. My brain doesn't shut down, no matter what. And that's just where my thoughts just run away from me. I have to kind of corral myself back in and recognize, is this something that I need to be focused on? Is it really uh, directly impacting me? Is this overwhelming me? Everything in PTSD feeds on another. So if you're not sleeping, it directly affects two or three attributes or behaviors downstream and if you are in that fight you fight about everything i would wake up in the middle of the night with the littlest of sound and i would physically have to go through and check every single window every single door if we were going to a movie theater i'd get on the actual internet and i'd check to see how many exits there were where would my family be the safest it absolutely consumed me most of my days Anxiety is the most common mental health illness in America. Anxiety, like most mental health conditions, is multifactorial in its cause, meaning that there is a pretty significant biologic component. There's also a genetic component, meaning that if your mom had anxiety, you might also have anxiety. And then, of course, like people can be triggered to have anxiety by life events. When I was in the military and I wasn't dealing with the pain, the actual events, I could turn that on and off when I needed it to be in the military. And military people will un understand that. And it kept me engaged to where I could let out. But without having the military, it felt like that I was completely lost. I quit my job because it was so unbearable. Anxiety and stress manifested in physical pain. Uh, I suffered lower back point pain to the point of like incapacitation. I, I, I couldn't get out of bed. Research suggests that black adults are 20% more likely to experience depression and anxiety. This is because I also was not a big fan of therapy, even though I was a therapist. But it, it did take me some time to, to better understand um, what that looked like for me and, and what I could do to kind of support my day to day. I was called a lot of things, you know, growing up and that they weren't very pleasant, you know, in response to um, how I dealt with things and, and how my reactions to certain things. For women, the incidence of developing anxiety disorders is twice as likely as men. Very often women are caught in the middle, the sandwich generation, if they're caring for aging parents and kids and a family and work, it can, all the stress plus a likely biological predisposition probably results in the greater incidence. The expectations that is put into a woman's space creates that anxiety. It creates that constant ongoing of thinking of, of emotions and things that we have to, to deal with day to day. But again, it goes also back to the science and how our body works. Um, we are just crafted to be emotional creatures. As little girls, we're encouraged to please others, to nurture and help and support others. And so if I don't do that, then what? What does that make of me? Am I not reliable? Am I not supportive? So choosing me, I know I'm not alone. 
I would tell my younger self that you're worthy just as you are. It didn't have a name, it didn't have um, any understanding around it. For me, it was just my personality. It's just who I was as a character and as a person. There are times that my anxiety becomes overwhelming and it triggers my depression. So it will then at that point need to take medication so that I can, you know, kind of reduce the, the symptoms. I realized real quick that I couldn't separate from the monster long enough that I could get skills or I could calm down long enough. I want to be able to turn him on, but I want him to be controlled. I want him to be managed and then be able to turn him off and put him in his little box. Combined methods of treatment tend to be more effective in managing anxiety. All the literature would say that the best treatment for all psychiatric conditions, but particularly depression and anxiety, is the combination of therapy with medication. Deep breathing, things like exercise, things like meditation, they're all options to help decrease your anxiety, but you shouldn't just do it because someone tells you to do it. You should try it out, see if you like it, see if it works for you. Has meditation helped manage your anxiety specifically? <laughs> and has meditation helped manage stress for you in your life? Yeah. I was very resistant to pursue medication as an option. Uh, as that, that goes for talk therapy as well. But I've come to lean on both of those tools in addition to my meditation practice to support my, my healing and just taking care of myself. Some treatments more than others can help rewire your brain. This idea of neuroplasticity that we hear so much about, um, that just using my mind in a certain way uh, can actually change how the brain functions and also physically how the, tr how the brain is. There's a natural progression of treatment. Meds, mindfulness, cognitive behavior, and then what happened to drive me to Ketamai is that I wasn't able to turn off the triggers. I could start seeing that they were coming but I couldn't stop them. So now I recognize what happens after the fact. I recognize some of the triggers. Studies have shown that repeated ketamine infusions are beneficial in reducing depression symptoms. They're awake. Um, they're just in this sort of disassociative space, sort of having that. It's not a true psychedelic, but it's a psychedelic-like experience. I would watch what happened to me in my trauma event through multiple of them. And then basically at the end, I would see that, okay, in the end, the only thing that mattered is how I responded to it then and after, and that I made it out safe. Um, and when you've got a traditional treatment such as SSRIs or SNRIs or tricyclics, that, you know, your first line therapy has about a 33% success rate. Ketamine, most of the research shows a 70 to 80% success rate. Coping skills are really like hobbies and they're not something where you can one size fit all everybody. Medication can have really amazing results in anxiety, but at the same time, I often tell people, well, of course you still have the worries. Of course you still have the triggers. Of course there are things still going on in your mind that medication's not gonna wipe away. Not every person is going to feel everything and not every person is going to feel anything. It's just understanding what does it look like for you and then what is it that I need to do to get to a point where I have a better management of this diagnosis. I don't believe you can ever get rid of him no matter what treatment you do. Um, there's no way to completely bridge what your old memories were before to now and skip all the things in between. The struggles, uh, we call it the, what, what crosses we bear, also makes us who we are today.